There we go. So, guys, thanks for uh, jumping on. Um, got a good group this morning. Uh, we appreciate it. Just a reminder, we're here every Tuesday. Okay, it's the same uh, same uh, Zoom ID every week. Now we got our own uh, Zoom ID that we're using. So every Tuesday, 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. If you're out there on the West Coast, we appreciate getting up early to join us. Uh, we're doing this every week. And again, I would tell you, you know, turn your mics on or turn your mics off while we're doing this if you can, but don't be afraid to, uh, you know, if you got a question that pops up, put it into the chat. Okay. You can do that. Um, you know, depending on how Mike does this, we might have some Q and A along the way, but definitely at the end of it, we'll open it up for any comments and questions, that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, the more participation, the better, uh, the more agents on here every week, the better. So, uh, anyway, Michael Higdon, down in uh, Kentucky, going to be leading the way. Kentucky Derby coming up. Is it this weekend? Coming up, and yeah, we just had our kickoff uh, this weekend, our Thunder yeah. over Lowell. So. There you go. So anyway, but Mike's been a realtor for uh, 19 years, been with EXP for four, hit Icon a couple times now, um, doing some big things down there. But this is, uh, uh, you know, probates in the States. It's just, it's you know, we were talking before everybody got on here, just, you know, it could be a great tool in the toolbox. I mean, because, you know, you, you know, sad but true you'd never run out of, of clients you know with something like this but you know you, you use every tool in the box to build the house i think sometimes we can get so focused on just using one thing that if something happens and the market turns and now that one thing isn't there anymore you know you now you're scrambling and trying to figure out how to get business so this is something to really look at and listen to um it's not something i know much about at all so I've got my pad of paper here and my my pen. I'm ready to go. So, Mike, why don't you introduce yourself real quick and uh, and we'll get started. Appreciate you doing yeah, this. Yeah, sure. Thank Mike, you. Michael Higdon, a lifelong Louisvillian. Um, and I'll go into my bio a little bit more when I pull up my slide here. But, yeah, this has been a niche, niche, however you want to pronounce it, that I've been kind of fell into. I used to be on a team about eight years ago when, when I was with uh, Remax. And uh, the, my two partners, they were they were probably 17 years my senior and with age, you know, as we get older, you know, that we're all going to this big real estate place in the sky eventually. And we were having some of our clients that were, you know, passing away and just kind of fell into this, you know, and started seeing more and more of this coming about. And a lot of the executors and the thing we, we were coming across were people didn't know the process and how to, uh, to handle the process and what was involved with being an executor or an administrator that comes with that estate. So that's kind of where, you know, I pick, picked it up and said, you know what, if these people need to sell, there's probably a, a ton more out there that need that. So we actively started uh, pursuing that. And I will pull my slide deck up here real quick and we can jump right into that. Let me know if everybody can see that. Yep, we're good. All right, let me, uh, give me one second, Tim. There we go. Still good? Yep. Okay, perfect. So let me move a bar here so I can see my thing fully. I'm sorry. Let me, this bar's in my way. I can't see my notes. Anyway, so working with probates in the States. Would you please play? There we go. So again, 19 years in real estate, uh, million dollar producer, four years with EXP, 15 years with Remax Properties East, and Elizabeth Monarch was the one that showed me the, the light and the way of the EXP model and uh, jumped over after seeing that and just all the things that it offered for me as an agent. My wife, her name is Kelly Kay. She's on a radio station here locally in the mornings, uh, DJX. I have two kids, Jacob and Ava. I have two pugs, uh, Poppy and Piper. And I graduated from the University of Kentucky with a marketing advertising degree. Stop. Okay, so in terms of the big questions are the who, what, when, where, why, and how. As a good journalist, I always ask those questions. So let's get into that. Why work with probates? Well, they need your help. They may just not know they need your help. <laughs> so that's one of our jobs is to describe that to them and how they do need your help. The property is normally vacant when we come across the states because the person's obviously not living there anymore. They have to sell it in order to settle the estate and get the money out to the heirs. You are the professional. You know the process of selling a home, so you can easily apply that to selling an estate home, which is a lot of times the same thing, but there are some other intricacies that to be aware of. 
if you are an investor and wear that hat as well, I've gone in and said to several estates, you know, are you, are you a realtor or are you an investor? Well, I can wear both of those hats and it depends on Mr. Seller, how you want me to handle that. But first and foremost, let's discuss selling the property and getting you the highest amount of money in the shortest amount of time. And the third thing it does for you is it helps you expand your database. If you do a good job for the executor, who most of the time is going to be living in the same city, you can add that person, them, their brothers, sisters, if there's multiple heirs to your database. So that's an excellent way to keep, continue to grow that database. Baby boomers are the wealthiest generation in American history, and they're about to pass down those riches over the ne next few decades. It's estimated that 45 million households will transfer over 65 million, excuse me, trillion dollars in wealth over the next few years. Just a little um, probate comedy right here. Harold died. Happy to know he gained immortality in social media. <laughs> so why work with, with probates in real estate? I had a coach, his name was Michael Young. He, uh, he's out in San Francisco and he gets, pro he does probably 80 deals a year. And in San Francisco, the average sale price is about, I don't know, 800 to a million right now. Anyway, he has, a, he started reaching out to attorneys a long time ago, probate attorneys and just finding out, Hey, do you have a go-to realtor that you use to handle all of your estates? And he's built up his career such that now when the estates come in, they're saying, well, you need to list this with Michael. So again, 80 out of the 120 deals that he does are people calling him to come and list the estate. Friends and clients, again, we all have friends, we all have past clients that unfortunately may have, you know, again, not to sound not compassionate, but it's death is a natural event that happens in life. <clears throat> I say Dr. Garman on here. This is a doctor client of mine. It was a great story. And this is one of them that led me into the industry where we went over, looked at his property. He was getting a ton of letters from investors. Uh, one was saying, I'll give you 75000 for the property. And I said, well, I'll give you seventy six. And we had a good laugh about it. But I said, you know, this is, you have a gem here. And I assume your mother and father wouldn't want you to give the property away. He's like, no. I said, well, do you have any money? He said, yeah. It had this ugly green shag carpet in it. But underneath, they had these beautiful pine floors that hadn't seen the light of day in about probably 50 years. I'm sure you all have been in these types of houses. And the, the walls were a mustard colored yellow. I said, well, listen, pull the carpet up. I got a guy that can help you with this. Paint the walls a nice neutral color. He did that. It cost him about $3,000. We took it from a $75,000 offer from an investor to $150,000 first day on the market. So we, we got to play the hero, went to a quick closing. And I mean, the place was, was immaculate after that. So that was a true inkling of what, what could come forward. And as I mentioned before, adding another leg on my production table, I already call expired for sell by owners, past clients, spheres of influence. Adding probates and attorneys is what I call another fishing pond and spinning plates. If you are, especially in this market, we talk about this is a recession proof business. There's a change coming, and, and I'm, I'm sure people all over the country are seeing this change happening right now where maybe the days on market are starting to get a little bit longer. I know there's still bidding wars, but with the rates going up, there is a change going on right now. So if you've been stuck on just the business coming to you, you might want to say, I need to fish in these multiple ponds because if I'm only in one pond, I'm only going to catch a certain amount of fish every day. But if I'm calling my expires, calling past clients, calling sphere of influence, calling probates, adding that, <clears throat> that other leg to my, to my pond, then I'm going to have more business coming in. Excuse me. Probate is, sorry guys, let me move my, there we go. Probate is a legal process whereby a probate court supervises the marshalling of a deceased person's debts and taxes and orders the property distributed according to the decedent's will or in its absence to the deceased person's heirs. Testate, you heard these are a lot of the, the common terms you're going to hear about. Testate refers to someone who dies that left a will. Intestate refers to someone who dies without a will. A testator is a person who has written and executed a last will and testament that is in effect at the time of his, of his or her death and 
It is in any person who makes a will. An executor or executrix, executor is the male, executrix is a female form of that. Someone who is responsible for ex executing or following through on the assigned task or duty. A will or testament is a legal document by which a person, the testator, expresses their wishes as how they are, how the property is to be distributed at death and names one or more persons, the executor, to manage the estate until its final distribution. And the heir is the person who inherits the property under the state law. Recession proof your business. When is the next recession? We talked about that. Who knows? But I don't want to, I don't want to be left with your, your pants down per se without having that other. <clears throat> that other revenue stream out there. And as, as uh, <coughs> Jeff alluded to, every month is a new opportunity. I get a new list of folks that had unfortunately passed away the previous month. So you're, it's a constant flow of people that may have a property to sell. You know, what are you waiting for? This is an opportunity that's out there right now. And a lot of, a lot of folks are afraid to take that next step in developing that next you know, something that they're not familiar with, but you have to be bad before you can be good at anything. So you have to go through what I call, you got to go through the suck to, to get, and that's with, that's with recruiting agents. That's with calling for sell by owners. And the same thing can be said with probates. Opportunity dances with those already on the dance floor. If you're not picking up the phone or taking the steps to make those calls, you're never going to be able to realize that new opportunity. In the end, we only regret the chances we didn't take. So the where, where do you work? For me, we do a lot of work in Jefferson, Odom, Spencer, Shelby, Bullet. Tim can allude to this because he's chewed a lot of the same dirt in these markets. Southern Indiana, um, one area in particular of town, multiple states. Just because you're doing business in one state, you could set up teams in Florida. You could set up teams in Alabama. Because guess what? There's people that are passing away there as well. Source of leads, finding estates. Um, there's multiple ways you can do that. Some are easier than other. And I'll start with, with the painful way. The painful slow way is to go, just go to the county clerk's office. You can go down there and access their computers for free, print out all the folks that, um, that show up as a, as a probate or an estate. And that will show you most of the time, it'll show you the executor, executrix. It'll show you the attorney that's handling the estate. And those are the three pieces of information you want. And a lot of times they'll give you the a state or probate um, executor's information in their mailing address. And if you don't have that, there's tons of resources that you can use. Um, or you can spend your time and pay someone else to do it. If you've got a, um, an ISA or a virtual assistant or someone in town, you can pay to go down to the courthouse once a week to pull that information. That's a good way to do it. I know we found out here, our local papers called the Courier Journal. We found out that they were printing all that information the second Tuesday of every month, uh, excuse me, the second Friday of every month. It was still slow because we had to go through that manually and kind of cross-reference all that data. But I was like, you know what, there's got to be a better way because it was taking us like a whole day to, to crunch that data and have our assistant um, find the, the phone numbers and all that. But there are resources you can go through. Spokio, uh, Zaba Search is a good one. Uh, Google, Anywho is another one. Cole Realty Resource, that's a paid one, but it has a lot of data and information. Uh, the white pages, and one on our MLS is called Forewarn. I'm sure that's on a lot of MLSs across the, the country, but that has a ton of, of data if you can find out the, the existing uh, state. States and probate attorneys, that's a great way of finding um, a resource for to get on the yellow pages or or Google and find out all of these probate estate attorneys and people that, that uh, specialize in that area and give them a call and say, hey, this is Michael Higdon with EXP. I just wanted to reach out. Do you have someone that is a go-to agent for you in handling probates and estates and helping the, the heirs with, that, with the selling of the property? And a third of them will tell you to go get bent. A third of them will tell you, I've already got somebody lined up. But the other third will say, you know, we really don't. Great. Could I come in, buy a cup of coffee, show you what we do, and see if we could be your first or secondary source for listing those properties? Um, all the leads, that's a great, uh, they've got a blog to watch. So that's a, if you get on uh, YouTube, they have a fantastic blog. You can also buy leads from them as well. I think they're based out of Atlanta. 
One of the classes I took was uh, MTI Education Services. Uh, Mike Torres is his name, Mike Torres International. Uh, but he pr puts on a really good class to teach you the ins and outs. It's way more detailed than this quick presentation I'm giving you, but I've picked up a few nuggets from him and a few things that I use in my, my process. Probateleads.com. I've never purchased anything from them, but I know that they're, I hear they're a pretty good source. The main one I use is probateleads.com, excuse me, usprobateleads.com. They're out of Tulsa and I've been getting my data from them for probably eight years and they do a great job. The way that data comes across to me is in an Excel file and it, it's cross-labeled to come to the, the decedent, their last address, city, state, zip, the personal representative with their address, their city, their state, their zip, and their phone. That's really important. They give you probably like three or four phone numbers for the personal representative. Good morning. Hey, good morning. And then they also give you on that data the estate mm -hmm. attorney, their phone numbers. And Tim, if I'm going to, uh, Jeff, if I go too fast or have any questions, stop me on this. Yeah, you're good. All right. Number one, and this is how, I know this might be a detailed thing, but when I'm crunching my data, this is the way that I look at it and why I do it. I first go through and I comb through the zip codes and I delete some of them. One, because I'm not familiar with that area. Two, it's not an area that I may feel safe in. There are the, you know, you'll have those in every city. And you know what I'm talking about. Um, lower than average sale price. Maybe I'm trying to keep only properties, you know, value 200,000 and above. And that's, that could be, that's up to the individual agent and how they want to pursue that. They may be too far to drive. So I try to stay at least half hour to 45 minutes within my own area. If they, you know, come up outside that area, say, you know what, that's in Bardstown or that's a little bit too far for me to drive. And they may be outside your MLS service area. I don't want to list something that not a lot of eyes on are going to see within my service area. Number two, I go through and I take out all the apartment complexes and nursing homes. Um, once I've done, you've done this for a while, you'll start to recognize some of the addresses because they're not, they'll show the estate, but they, they passed away in the nursing home or uh, the apartment where they were living. And that's just not a, a property that you're going to market to. I take out all the empty addresses, the speech for itself, blank spaces out of the, the database, uh, common names and spouse, Compa compassion. I put compassion in here. If John Smith was the decedent and Mary Smith is the personal representative and it's the same address, more than likely that's his wife. And I'm not going to market to them saying, hey, do you need to sell the property when they're still living there? Or I'm not going to make a call saying, hey, I'm sorry I saw that John passed and be like, well, yeah, that was my husband and I'm still living here and I don't need to sell the, sell the property. I know some agents that do do that um, and kind of keep a maybe moving in the future because a lot of times the, the surviving spouse may not want to remain in the property, whether it's financial purposes or, you know, for emotional reasons, they don't want to have that house without their, their past husband or wife. Next thing I do is I check to see if it's active, pending, or sold on our MLS because I don't want to solicit to anyone that's, that's already under, under contract. And yes, you're going to miss some listings. It's okay. GOI, get over it. It's just one of those things. You can't, we can't have a relationship with everyone just like we can't list every single property in our town. It's okay. <clears throat> Next thing I do, I check on our property value administration or the tax records. I make sure that their name is spelled incorrectly because a lot of times um, U.S. probates, there'll be a misspelling on the, the name or misspelling on the the on the address, sometimes the numbers get transcribed. So you just want to cross check that. I make sure that the values are within the value that I want to kind of be at. If it's a $25,000 property, me personally, I'm not going to go after that just because it's, it's not worth my time. We get nursing homes, apartments, businesses. We can cross-reference see if they're being for sell, sell by owner. Sometimes an, an address will come across and maybe the mom or dad were living in their son or daughter's um, house with them. So you want to make sure if it's, if it's John Walker and his mom was Ruby Walker, uh, you know, I'm not going to solicit to that address. Save the postage because I don't want to waste postage if people are living there. Uh, address may not exist. If you're pulling it up and say this, you know, I can't even find this house, then I take it off the list. And it may have been a rental property that they were living in. So it could be another owner that owns that property. 
If you want others to be happy, practice compassion. If you want to be happy, practice compassion. It's a great quote from the Dalai Lama. Now you've got your list of people. So what do you do now? Now's the time that you want to take action. So what I do is I will send out my first letter. I make my first calls, call the attorneys, and I'll, or you visit the property. Sending out your first letter. See, this is from an old uh, presentation, but I'd given out a packet in this class. And I have a copy of the letter that I send out right here. I'll, I'll read it real quick to you. It goes, dear sir or ma'am, we are writing to you regarding the estate property at 4517, blah, blah, blah. Our group realizes that this may be a difficult time for you and the individuals involved with your loved one's estate. To that end, we have assisted several families that were going through the same issues that you may find yourself facing today. What we offer is a consultative role to make the settling of the estate transition as smoothly as possible. Please find listed below some of the various services we provide free market analysis of the property value, home clean out, maintenance and home repairs, and a couple other things that we put on here. If you are considering selling the, I'm sorry. Oh. If you are considering selling the property, somebody want to mute on that? There we go, we got it. There we go. If you're considering selling the above mentioned property and need any of the services listed above, we would greatly welcome the opportunity to meet with you in order to discuss your plans in more detail. We thank you for your time and consideration, and we look forward to speaking with you very soon. I can't tell you how many calls I've gotten from that letter, people saying, you know what? I have a stack of letters here from investors that are basically, hey, I'll sell, sell you somebody died. I'll give you 50,000 for the property if you want to sell it. Just no professionalism, no compassion with the property. And they'll say, you know what? This just came across more caring, more professional, more concise, what we're looking for. So I will send that out. I talk about here, uh, hub referral network. You should be developing key partners to help you provide multiple options to the seller and the executor that's gonna differentiate, differentiate you from the competition. Who are those people in your hub? Well, cash buyers and investors, you wanna have those in your back pocket. Um, state sale company, because a lot of people need a house cleaned out or have an estate sale done. Contractors that do this type of work, clean out crews. You can call your tops um, SEO agents, uh, not SEO, but your top uh, foreclosure agents in the area. They have a ton of crews like that. Title companies, closing attorneys, senior moving companies, estate planning, family law, uh, registered investment advisors. So I also had a script in there. So when I'm making these calls, so what I'll do is I'll send this letter out. And within two or three days, I'm calling them and I'm saying, hey, Jeff, this is, uh, my name is Michael Higdon. I'm looking for Jeff. My name is Michael Higdon. I'm a local real estate agent with EXP. I was calling about the property here on Baker Street. I believe you're the executor or the administrator on that. Does that ring a bell? And they're like, yeah, that's, that was me. Great. I know I'm probably a little premature. And I was wondering, when you and or the estate might be selling the real property at blank. And then it's like, well, they'll give, they'll tell you what they're looking to do. We're keeping that in the family or we're looking to sell it. Or yeah, we're possibly going to be getting that on the market in the next few months. And that's where you can say, you know what? I understand you're probably in the clean out or clean up phase. And they're like, yeah, that's where we are. Great. I'm just curious, are you going to be choosing the realtor or is the attorney handling that for you? And I say, well, no, we're choosing the realtor. Perfect. Great. Will you be choosing them remotely if they're out of town or, or will you be uh, coming into town? Um, that's again, use that if they're an out of town person. Fantastic. When will you be starting the process for choosing the realtor? Perfect. Will you need help getting the property prepared for sale? And then you can allude to the letter that you, you know, we sent you a letter. There's a list of things that we can provide. Just curious when you're choosing a realtor is the experience in probate or, Estates important to you and your and your uh, family. Well, yes or no. Are you making a decision with or without an attorney? How many heirs are there? How um, how many are getting money from the sale? A lot of these are probably more of a pre qualifying. When you get to that, you really just want to make sure you can get in the door. When you're talking to them, be sure to get an email address and send an email recapping the call. How long? <clears throat> Excuse me. Call along with the CMA if it was asked for. Send a handwritten note. Always good to send a handwritten note to self set yourself apart and then plan on lots of lead follow-up because these are not a, 
for sale by owner right now. They to, sometimes they are going through emotional distress. They're not ready to go in the property. They may have stuff going on with the uh, the will hasn't been recorded yet. They have to clean it out, clean it up. They have to fix it up. So it can be. I've had estates that take a year, but if you keep following up with them and say, you know, when would be a good time? I know you all have a lot going on and just, you know, with my experience, I help a lot of estates and probate executors get through that process. When would be a good time maybe to follow up with you just to see where you are with that? And they'll tell you, give me three months, set it, call them back in a couple of months. Reach back out. Hey, it's Michael Hignan. I know we spoke a couple of months ago. Just wanted to see First of all, how the clean out was going. Did you need any contractors or anything like that to help you out with? And they'll say, yeah, you got anybody. What do you need? And then pull your list up that you've already created. I've got this guy. You're trying to provide value. And then say, you know, by the way, I know the market's changing. It could be for your area too. Would it be helpful to know what values in the area are going to be? They're like, yeah, great. When's the next time you're going to be at the property? Then try to set that appointment. Always trying to set that appointment when you're talking to them. A coach once told me prospecting will make you a living, lead follow-up will make you a fortune, especially with probates and estates. It, the lead follow-up is really where you're going to be able to show that. I know I'm probably setting three or four appointments a month, taking two to three listings a month from this, and I'll sell one to two properties every single month from this. So can you imagine, let's just say you did one deal, one new deal a month from this. And your average sale is 300000 excuse me, yeah, $300,000. What is that, over $100,000 that you could put into your, your repertoire there just by you know, adding a couple more phone calls. So I mentioned here on the appointment, when you're going out, you're going to show up. Number one, be on time. Better to be early. Mentally, physically be prepared and dress nice. Bring a copy of the comparative market analysis, your marketing plan, and a list of referrals. And of course, the listing contracts, you can get that signed. Look for areas where you can provide value and guidance, just as I did with the doctor. Say, you know what? You might try this, or you might say it's in such disrepair where you say, you know what? It's real easy for me to spend your money, kind of the way my wife does my money. Maybe add a little comedy in there. But I'm only going to tell you to spend a dollar if you're going to make $10 on that dollar. All right. If you, you're spending a dollar and it can be a Pandora's box where they're spending one here and then you turn around, oh, I need this done. I need this done. Or I need this done. I'm trying to use my professionalism to say, you might just want to list it as is because here's the, the tiered values. Here's the as is values in this area, Mr. Seller. Here's the middle grade values. If you put a little bit of paint and carpet into it and here's the top tier values of what similar properties are selling for in the area. Now that you've looked at these values based upon that, where do you see the pricing of the property should be? Or what do you, what do you want to take on? And then hush, breathe and listen. And then they're going to tell you, well, you know what, we've got a little bit of money. We don't have any money. So we really just want to sell this to pay mom's bills and get, get down the road. It's all in asking questions on where they are, what they want to do. And then you can truly play that advisory role and uh, help them. Again, my job is to cap, help them capitalize on the market and realize that the value that's in the property. Is this an investment opportunity to, for you and one of the investors you work with? That's where you can change that hat and say, I know you're getting a lot of letters. You've got one for 75000 Mr. Seller. These are the bottom feeders in our industry. I understand being an investor. Do you want to honor your mother and father? by getting this on the market, or do you want to give it away to an investor who's going to come in and do the exact same thing that you could do yourself? This is a chance for you to, to be the, the knight in shining armor. Um, direct mail, I recommend a minimum of three unique letters. Letters two and three were in the packet. I do have those. The first letter I read to you. The second ones are just kind of quick snippets. One is, I don't know if you can see this, but I'll, it is the, uh, the timeline for probate, a lot of executors don't know. This spells out, you know, on month one through two, all the way through months nine through 15, the, uh, the jobs that a probate should be, should be doing. Okay, and, and happy to share that with everybody that's on the, on the call today. This is the state's executor's duties during the probate process. This is what the executor should be doing. And it, it really 
breaks that down nice. Now, if you got this and said, hey, Mr. Mr. Executor, I know you're going through a lot of stuff. I didn't know if you knew all the duties that you as the executor may, may be having to do, but I wanted to share this with you. And if we can help you through that process or line you up with a, an estate attorney if you don't have one already, let me do that. I can't tell you how many estates I've gone in and these are hanging on the refrigerator. Guess what else is hanging on the refrigerator? My card. So I say, and then follow up phone calls with minimum of three calls, networking, introduce yourself as the expert in your area. A great thing that I picked up from Mike Torres, one of his is you want to differentiate yourself. If you had four cards on a table and one of them is just, they're all the normal real estate calls, then you see this one laying on the table. They're going to say, well, gosh, let's pick that guy. because It even says on his card, he's the real estate agent or the probate agent. If you send that over and I'm everything I'm sending over my package is very professional. I had a, a local newspaper that had done a write up on me and in, in small town I was working in, but and it discussed a lot of the things that I've done for probates in the past. I included that in the package just to show, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a person has a picture of my family. I have some of my, all of these are the probates that I've sold in the past. And says, do you want this experience working for you? In seven years, I've sold about 150 probates. Um, but I had to start somewhere. And so if you don't have those right now, that's okay. But if you start digging this, this well, it's going to fill up with water for you eventually. Um, why do agents not, not take this on? Well, fear, fear of the unknown, fear of getting snapped back. I've had some really pissed off sellers that have said, you know, I can't believe you're calling me on this. You know, my, my mom's passed away to, to, months ago or my dad or whatever. And I'm just like, you know what, ma'am, I'm, I'm just trying to be compassionate here and respectfully reach out to see if I can be of service to you and over the estate. You're going to get that. Um, agents don't know how to consistently gather leads. They're not getting accurate phone numbers. They may not be making the phone calls, relying solely on inbound response from the mail. If you just send this out and you sit and watch the phone waiting for it to ring, it's going to be a long day of waiting. But if you send this out and call the people, say, hey, you know what? You probably just received a, a, uh, a letter from me, some information. Hopefully you found that valuable and then jump right into your script. Not being clear on the offer, what you bring to the table and why you are different than your competition. Well, doesn't everybody just listen and sell houses? They don't. There's actually some things that we bring to the table that can help walk you through this process. Wouldn't you want to know about those, Mr. Seller? So that's kind of a... Um, topical <clears throat> view of that. What else was I going to sh share? Um, that's awesome, Mike. So yeah, so that's that's pretty much it. Very cool. When we're done, could you upload those, um, like the packet of stuff that you have, those letters, upload them into Workplace, into the Freedom Absolutely. Team group and yeah, Workplace? Awesome. And then maybe guys, um, if you're a guest here, you're not part of EXP, just, you know, talk to the person that invited you on here and we can get you a copy of that, those letters. So you have those. Okay. Um, what if that would be helpful for you? So, um, so seven years you've been, you've been doing this, you've done 150 of these. About probably over 150 of these. That's awesome. I mean, that's and a powerful go, thing to add into your, your, you know, repertoire of tricks, you know, and it really and is. And I've bought, yeah, I've probably, you know, bought three or four of them that have been nice flips for me because I've gone in and the guy's just been like, you know what? I don't want to fool with putting this on the market. Um, would you give me 80 for it? Like, and I was like, yeah, okay, that's fine. And then we put 20 into it and sold it for 140. And, but as long as you're up front saying, look, here's my intention of what I'm going to do with this property, you know, just have everything above board. Um, there's, there's nothing wrong with that as long as you're, you're telling that. But I can't tell you how, also when I'm going through my list, you're gonna get a lot of errors that are out of town. Those are the meat. Those are the ones that I go after first because there's probably been 20 executors that I've never met face to face. I've sent them a letter. We've had several calls and they feel like they get to know me. And I'm like, look, I know you're not local. Is there somebody that, that you're relying on to, to open, you know, keep the grass cut or check on the place for you? Sometimes they're like, no, I, I don't know when I'm going to get in town. I said, do you trust me enough to send me a key? I'll go over there, check it out. I can take care of all the cleanup, getting rid of all the stuff. We've got some charities that we align with. They can come over there and clean up, clean out, whether it's a, 
disabled veterans, the goodwill. I've got a guy that does, I've had one soup to nuts, went over there, never met the lady. We cleaned it out, cleaned it up, hired the painters, did all the work for them. I'm not, they're paying the bills, obviously. I'm not, I'm not paying the bills, right. but we just sent all of the invoices to her and um, they cut her a check at closing and it was mailed to her. And, you know, she's like, I can't tell you how much I appreciate this and how great this has been. Uh, but the ones that are out of state, they're not in town a lot. They need somebody to handle the process for them and say, look, if I could be your eyes on, if I could handle this in pro process for you, is that something that you'd be interested in? They're like, oh my gosh, would you? I said, it would be my pleasure because it's my job. Right. So your number one source for leads, usprobateleads.com. That's the US one that probate, you use yes. primarily. Yes. I think they're out of, I want to say they're out of Tulsa. Okay. But you can find there's several great because they, they serve, some of them are regional, the, the, the states that they serve. But if you type in probate leads for real estate agents, uh, I know all the leads is a, is a good resource. And the mm -hmm. pricing on those is going to vary based upon your, your market demographics and how big your population is. But um, this isn't, it's not going away. And there's your, your competition on this is going to be very low. Now, investors have started diving into this a lot more. So when you're going into a, a property, you'll see, uh, I mean, I've had executors sit down and they show me the stacks of letters and they're like, well, here's yours. And it was separated. Yours actually looked, you know, it looked nice because I like, I mean, I've got a marketing background and I just like the fluidity. And if you show that professionalism and take that extra time to present your stuff well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come across well. And again, I say compassion a lot because this is not a typical you've got to be really especially on the phone say gosh I'm, I'm so sorry for your loss and i'm just you know respectfully i wanted to see if you and or the estate may have a need to sell this property anytime in the future right and again you're going to get a myriad of responses on that from we're keeping it it's already sold my brother's living in it um yeah possibly in the future great what does that look like for you all? You say future is that, are you, is that three months? Is that six months? I got probably six months. Perfect. If you, if you knew that you could capitalize on the market right now, because there's a, there's a huge lack of inventory, would you still want to wait the six months or would you want to know about what the property could be worth right now? And they're like, well, what do you mean? Gotcha. Well, when's the next time you're going to be over at the property, maybe doing some work or some cleanup? We're going to be over there Saturday. Would, you know, I, do, I don't mind doing this because I'm in your area all the time. Would it be all right if I just stop by, see if it currently works for any of the buyers I'm working for? And while I'm there, I can show you several things. One is what the potential value of the property may be. Would Saturday at 10 o'clock work for you or how about 2 o'clock, which is better? Right. How big is your market, Michael? You're in Louisville. Have, right? um, yeah, so we cover southern indiana but the louisville metro kind of the surrounding counties about i'd say 800 850 000. okay how many leads do you typically get a month for you so a good list i say good list don't take that the wrong way uh yeah probably 200 people really and by the time i pare that down it's probably 75 again because i take out a lot of the a lot of the uh rentals or you know, if they're most of it is <clears throat> they're still living in the house and they were the their executive for the husband or the wife. And so, again, okay. I just don't go after those. I'm looking for the ones that are if I see an out of town person, that's that's the one I focus on most. Yeah. How much do you pay for the leads? I mean, does it is it like, are you is like a subscription kind of service? X it is. Amount a month? Monthly, okay. The ones that I pay for, I think they're one hundred and eighty dollars a month. And again, some of those are more, some of those are less. Um, like a buddy of mine in Boston, he uses them, but there's so many more people and the list is so much bigger. Um, I think he's like three, 400 bucks a month, yeah. but he's getting four or five appointments from it every single month. Wow. And it's the same thing. You're making that call and it's, you're getting a myriad of, uh, if you're, if you're in it and you keep this thing, if you, if you get to the bottom of that list and you called it, I call it four or five times. I'll send a letter out, then I'll send another letter out in a couple of weeks, and then I'll send another letter out after that in a couple of weeks. And then mm -hmm. sometimes I'll just let them sit, you know, and nothing happens because think about it, their motivation changes 
when the bills start coming due. Yeah. So if they, if mom had passed away back in, I mean, what are we? We're almost to May. Let's say somebody passed away in February or March and the bills start coming due. And if, if mom or dad only had a certain amount in that bank account, they're running through that money. When they get through that money, guess what the other money they have is? The equity on the home. And they're like, oh crap, we got to sell this now because we've got to take care of these other bills. Yeah. And the only way we can sell it is to get it on the market. So they're, they're mode, it's, there's a lot in the timing of that. Uh, Mike Torres does a, does a really good job of, of describing that in his course. That's that MTI education services, mm -hmm. right? Mike Torres? MTI, Mike Torres. And there's, you know, there's several of those out there. That's one that I'd paid for. And, but he gave a lot of, that's where I got these, uh, the probate timeline and the duties of probate. But he gives you a lot of good mailers and things to use. And he gives you okay. all the sample letters you could ever want to go after the, and I'm not as good as going after the uh, probate attorneys as my friend, Michael Young. But that's a that's another market. You could just sit there and work that all day where you don't have to call the executors or the probates. I just have a better feel for talking to them directly. Right. But you could line up attorneys all day and just have the referrals coming in. Right. Do you know how much his classes are, Mike Torres? Like for I want to say approximately five, six hundred bucks, maybe. Okay. Okay. To go through it. So I didn't, you know, again, I think the value that I got was well worth the oh heck yeah the knowledge and everything i got just from stuff you can send out and ideas and processes and again i'm always refining this i'm trying to do more with <laughs> getting their emails using follow-up boss sending you know with video everybody's moving towards video so if you can convey you know a video instead of sending in a letter just saying hey i don't know if you've got this this shows the timeline i didn't know where you all might be in the time timeline of this but if we can help you out or give them value that's the whole thing is you're trying to be value and insert yourself into to the middle of that process sure sure why don't you do both you know send the letter and then to, you know to also yeah. just put together a video where you can really i'm doing i'm doing a ton with video and to just do a video that you can really just you know again be compassionate on that video or, you know or and tell that story when you're walking when you're walking out the you know heading to closing hey this is michael this is let me tell you about this estate we were working with the baxters here they were in a tough position they didn't know the process we were to help, able to help them get it on the market get it sold in less than two days we helped them with the cleanup the clean out we had the contractors in there and you know they were going to put it on the market for eighty five thousand or give it to an investor for that we showed them that the value was really much higher than that in the market. So if you're currently going through a similar situation and we can help you with that, you know, give us a call with the processes, with the systems, with, you know, if you need contractors to come in, we'd love to be able to be that resource for you. And then yeah. send that out. Well, and, you know, and do, do one or two of those, get a quick video with the Baxters, you know, Absolutely. and let them tell that story of how much of a help you were for that. I mean, you know, that's a, that's a, something you could send now to yeah, These I mean, I've had, I've had executives that have that have broken down and given me hugs at closing and in tears. Sure. And just, you know, you, you you get to be part of these people's lives and then uh, say, look, I'm not going to be a stranger to you because I want to do the same job for you and your family that I was able to, <clears throat> to do yeah. for your mom. Yeah, very cool. Guys, let's open it up a little bit. What 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 does this get you thinking <laughs> about? Let's talk about it for a second. Mike. Question. Yeah. Uh, so I'm getting more at bats just in general, and uh, I'm use, currently using uh, EXP marketing for my uh, my listing um, presentation. But I need just a little bit more. Could somebody share? I, I know Michael, you're local. Maybe somebody out of town. What kind of software or marketing that I could use to? go over the top a little bit. I mean, the EXP marketing stuff is good, but yeah, I need just something a little bit more. I'll tell you what I use. Um, I use a company called uh, Toolkit CMA. Okay. And yeah, and that'll link, you know, you pull your, this is what it looks like. And it's what I'm going on. So oh, that's great. You can pull all your, and I bought a, a Vela binder that puts all this, but yeah, you, you, you put all your information there. You pull out the comps that you want to use. And it'll put in the data. It's already got preloaded EXP information. It gives the, uh, put, has a quick letter in there. Dear homeowner, thanks for giving me the opportunity to present to you and closes the marketing. It's got all the MLS EXP personalized stuff. Um, it has, I've, I mean, you could literally send them 50 pages of stuff. I've taken a lot of stuff out, but it has 
so many graphs in there to show you mm -hmm. when your property when it you know when it dips in value it's got how do you, how people find the homeowner um and then ultimately to break you can select the way that you want to break down it shows you all the information for the subject property and these are great for estates too because this is the same information that i presented yeah. to them it shows you that then it'll show you the map of the neighborhood with all the dots and say mr seller you know what all of these this is a red dot for all the solds this is a yellow dot for the pending. I normally have some green dots for active properties on here. What don't you see? Mm -hmm. And they're like, I don't see any green dots. Exactly. So do you know what that means for you? And they're like, what? I said, you don't have any competition right now. So it means you need to get on the market sooner than later. So let's go ahead and look at the numbers and figure out what your property is going to be worth. And then you, <laughs> this, is the, this is the subject property. It shows all the solds with similar comps and everything. And then this does a great job of breaking down the um, statistics, the average home price, the with the highs and the lows, the median, average price per square foot, average days on market. Then it'll spit out a range kind of where the pricing is showing them. Mr. And Mrs. Seller, based upon that information of all the properties that have sold in your area, what price do you think we should use to convey value and to get a buyer to buy your home over any competition that may be coming on the market. Love it. Yeah, it just shows you, you know, the plan of action. And in the back, it shows, you know, again, you can put as much stuff in here, all of your, it's got a great checklist. It's got preparing your home for sale, all these things and say, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, these may apply to your home. Some of them may not. And you can say, have you ever watched HGTV? And they're going to be like, yeah. <laughs> so, you yeah. know how they go through and have a checklist for sellers? This is already built in. So just go through that. And if some of them, if something applies to you, great, check it off. If it doesn't, you don't have to worry about it. It gives additional sources for them to use. And it also has your resume. And the last page is you can go through and put, plug in all of your best clients that you've had in the past and ask them, hey, if I put you in my referral base, would you give me a good referral if one of my future clients were to call you? Don't put the wow. ones that say, no, you did a crappy job for me in here. Because if you call them, then. <laughs> that's great. That's the next level. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. So Toolkit CMA, that's that's a good one that I use. Thank you. There you go. So, Ted, does that answer your question? Toolkit CMA? Yep. There you go. Cool. Who, who it's, like, guys... it's like 20 bucks a month, I think. Oh, that's good. awesome. That's cheap. Who? Anybody in here done estate sales probates? Anybody? Steve? I have. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like I did one uh, earlier this year. Um, it kind of fell into my lap, so I didn't do all this marketing stuff. It was a friend of mine's mother was uh, living in a condo here in Colorado Springs, been living there for 25 years or something like that. Anyway, uh, it was easy. It was, it was absolutely uh, the, the attorney and the, the title company handled all the all of the details that has to be taken care of in order to sell that property. And they took care of that and got it all set up for the title company, got it all set up. I then put it on the market and sold it just like I would any other case. It just took a little longer, about three months to get it, the attorney and the title company to do their stuff. And, uh, but it was really easy. We put it on uh, the end of January and closed the end of February this year. Wow. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot. That's a great point, Steve. And then you don't have to worry about because yeah. nine times out of ten, they're going to be um, they're going to be vacant. So you can yep. set it from a showing standpoint. You can set it as a go and show, and then all of the feedback that comes in is just kicking over directly to the executor, uh, so they know all the showings that are going on. So that's, I mean, it, yeah, vac the the vacant part of it is a real uh, real asset. Yeah, and other than that, it was just like any listing. That I told them what they should do to get it prepared to sell and for not top dollar, but for a reasonable dollar, they did it. And, but it sold the first day on the market. There you go. Yeah. I've had a couple, but it's been like you, Steve, it's not something I've pursued, but I've had a couple drop into my lap, you know, like past clients that all of a sudden right. had a situation and they called me up. Tim, have you, you, you said you've done, have you pursued it, Tim, in any way, like what Michael has in terms of like really making it part of your business or is it more like where you've had a few along the way? No, I mean, I've had more than a few along the way. I've probably done 20, 25 in my okay. career. 
Okay. Um, but I've never pursued it uh, from a prospecting standpoint. I mean, Michael's got a phenomenal system and really appreciate you sharing everything, buddy. That was yeah. really, really good, good presentation. Everybody should add this to their tool belt. Well, that's what I'm thinking. I mean, it's just like, you know, so many people out there right now scrambling for listings. But again, there's, you know, if you're, I could see that where you are 800,000 people, a couple hundred a month, you know, coming in like this, where, you know, you start nurturing those leads and just get a system set up. Again, just doesn't have to be your entire business, but but a tool in the toolbox, you're picking up two or three listings a month over yeah. time. Yeah. As that builds over time, you start building that up. The only it's caveat like, I will say, Jeff, is don't do this in the local market because okay. it probably won't work for you. Because I think I got it covered for everybody that's involved here. Oh, in the Louisville market. Yeah, yeah. No, stay away from Louisville. Mike, Michael's got Louisville. <laughs> no, I hear you. No, I'm kidding. There's more than enough pie for everybody to go around. So Yeah. No, it's, it's it, honestly, it's it, 20 years of doing this. It's just not something, I don't know. I, I know one guy here in town that, I mean, that's what he does. And he's doing 40, 50 deals a year. Yeah. You know? And so... But outside of him, I mean, maybe, I'm sure there's more, but I don't know. It's just not something I've even thought yeah, of. I'd say it's my it's my second best, you know, of course, Pat's client sphere of influence are always going to represent 50 to 60% of your business as well. They should, um, but you don't want them to represent 90% of your business. Like some people make the mistake of. Yeah. So they represent another states are probably 20, 25% of what I do. And then the rest is, um, you know, home light or, um uh, for sale by owners, expired, just listed, just sold. Right. Right. What other questions, guys, before we uh, wrap it up? Kim? You said it's just like any other sale, but is it a little more complicated with paperwork trying to get court approval or a bunch of different heirs to agree? I would say most of the, the heirs is the, is, the, is the part. So you'll see, you'll see some people's true colors come out on that. But if, they're, if they are the executor and you want to find out who the named executor is in the will, and then you just tell them, you say, did you know, Mr. Executor, that you actually are the decision maker and control all of this, regardless of what your heirs want to do? And they're like, no, I didn't know that. Yes, you are the, regardless of what they want to do. That's why your parent had named you in that. So I'd say 80% of the time, they've already got an attorney that's working with them and has, and has prepped them on, you know, the wills already in process, or if there's not a will in process, they've named an administrator who's taking care of that. Um, so that's why you just want to be familiar with some of the, some of the terms, the processes of, uh, of what an estate is. And that's why I recommend some of those courses to go through, but as you go through it, you'll learn just, you know, is it the same as listing a regular house? It can be, but when you have other heirs involved, you want to find out who the problem child's going to be real early. And so, and you ask, ask the, that's why I asked that question. Is everybody on board with selling this property? Well, my brother, Bob, he lives in Bardstown. He's not real great. What's his number? Can I call him and talk to him, please? So then you call him and say, hey, hey, man, I heard that there's some opportunities for you to get more involved in this process. And I want to make sure that you were on board with, uh, with selling the property. Is there, any, is there any issues that you may have or anything, any concerns that I can quell? And then you can draw it out from a professional side. And they're like, well, I, you know, they said I couldn't do this. It's like, why don't we have a meeting of the minds and get together and see if we can all figure this out together. So you want to be the, the calm in the middle of a hurricane. And what about um, court involvement? Is there any delays or anything? No, not unless typically, you know, it just depends on where they are in the process, even though, um, if they have a will, it's going to be great if, if it's administrator, because normally you can sell a property within the state to settle the estate. It's just they can't close the estate without the without the property being sold because it's considered real, real value uh, within that estate. So you just need to check with that attorney and with your with the state laws within your state. Um, so it's going to be a case by case basis as to where they are on the paperwork. Thank you. Just you'll learn to yeah, you'll learn to ask the questions to say you know you know do you have a probate attorney you're working with? Was there a will? Are there any other heirs involved? So you'll you'll just learn to get a checklist. Thank you. Sure. Wow. Cheryl, did you have a question? You got your your hand raised. There you go. Yes. Hey, Michael. Appreciate it. Thank Excellent you, presentation. Sure. Uh, what sources do you use to follow up to get names and numbers? Where do you find the names and numbers of people, please? Um, well, the first one is from the from U.S. probate. They're going to send you all of the information of the heirs and the executors. So I'm calling the executors directly on that. And a lot of times they'll put the number in there. 
they don't send emails on that. So, so I'm normally reaching out. It could be the right number, could be the wrong number. That's why I'll go on Forewarn if I can find their address and just cross-reference it on Forewarn or Zaba Search or pull them up in the, um, the PVA. Yeah. And show if you were if you were late getting on it, the very towards the beginning of his presentation, he did have a list of different websites to go to and different lead sources. So I'll have this recording put up onto Workplace probably within the next hour. So you can always go back and, and watch, you know, if you missed anything there. So, okay. Um, any other comments, questions, any thoughts, guys? Anybody? Anybody? Oh, that was excellent. Thank you. It's good stuff. Yeah, yeah, really good stuff. So, Michael, I appreciate your time, man. Thank you for yeah, doing this. Everybody really got, got a time. lot of good things to think through. You know, Thanks, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Really good things to think through. Guys, uh, just so you know, um, we'll be back here next Tuesday. I've got our, uh, right now, I've got the Colorado State broker, Shelly Vincent. Um, I've got her lined up for next Tuesday. Uh, we're going to be talking crypto. She's uh, She's got a deal going on right now. Um, it's a $12 million deal, and it's being done with crypto. Um, you know, a couple of months ago, if you guys saw it, the, you know, it kind of made national news. There was a place in Florida that sold for like 300 and some thousand with crypto. This will probably make national news as well when this one yes. uh, goes through because it's it's probably the biggest deal. Well, I'm sure it's got to be the biggest deal that's been done probably so far. And uh, and there's a whole and she's taught several classes here uh, in Colorado uh, with this. Um, you know, she knows what she's doing. So I'm going to have her on here next week to start that conversation. We might have her on several times to kind of go through it and break it down. But that could, you know, again, another tool in the toolbox, just something more to learn and kind of stay ahead of things in this industry. So anyway, that is on schedule right now for next Tuesday. Um, we will be back next week, 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific, and uh, we'll go from there. So uh, again, we'll have this posted up in the next hour or so. Michael, if you could upload those files, uh, the paperwork. Cool. So we That's have that there. We can attach it. And if you've got guests on here, if you are a guest, just get to, out to the person that got you on here and we'll get all that paperwork and get you recording this as well. So guys, thank you very much. Have a great rest of your week. All right. We'll see you soon. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank Thanks, you. Jeff. Bye. Thanks, Jeff. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys.